Hi, I'm Elisa Starr. And I'm Lydia the Twatosaurus. And, and this, this is Super Snarky. Snarky! Okay, so we are best friends, um, and we've been best friends for a while. Um, but we just we just we just got back together. We had a little bit of a break, like a year off of our best friendship. So, so like a lesbian divorce. Yes, because we're still best friends, but the sexual component in our relationship has died. I'm just kidding. There was never really a sexual component to our relationship. Well, I mean, I've been talking about how much I get fucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we always talk about how much you get fucked. And also, like, lately, I like that there's, like, a... Like, that you have, like, a hyperfixation on anal. Like, that makes me feel really good about all okay, the conversations. Well, all right, so here's the deal. When I was at the comedy club the other night, everybody keeps joking about eating ass, right? Yes, because right? eating ass is eating everybody's ass is new, like thing. The new fucking thing. It's the new blowjob. It's the new blowjob. Right, job. but right. here's the deal. People are tired of listening to it already. You can see it. People are fucking tired. And every woman you who walked why? up there to talk about eating ass fucking flopped. But no one went up there and talked about how using anal as leverage. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Like, nobody made any jokes about, like, how are you going to talk me into anal? You know? Like, well, if I happen to crash your brand new car, I think I might feel obliged. (laughs) I like how you're like, okay, these are the kinds of situations that that can get you into anal. <laughs> like these are like <laughs> these, these are the, the relationships. I mean, aside from being twenty five and drunk on June, right? Right? Because right, that's the right. that's the one that always happens, right? For, or that's how it happened for me. I don't know. I've that always I've always wanted to do anal like my whole life. Like I ever since I started having that. sex, I always thought anal is sounds really interesting to me. It's just it's something you do with a boyfriend. And, you know, like, I just didn't have any guys who stuck around long enough for us to get to that. And admittedly, I never mentioned to any of the guys that I was dating that if we did end up in a long-term relationship, that anal was definitely on the table. So maybe that would have helped me get a little bit further in my relationships. (laughs) But I always was like, I just want to fall in love so somebody can fuck me up the ass, you know? Like, that was my... And then, you know, of course, I, I just got impatient and drunk. And <laughs> and it turns out that um, because I have a huge ass, uh, uh, anal, and actually, but like a much smaller asshole than a vagina, right? Like, so it turned, like, you know how I'm always talking about how my, my vagina is a never ending tunnel, right? But it turns that out. It has wrong turns and cul de sacs. <laughs> yeah, wrong turns, cul de sacs. Men can get lost in there. Like, you know, there's a whole bunch of, like, oh, honey, that's, you know, like, if you don't have eight inches. I wonder how the Survivor series of Elise <laughs> Star's fucking vagina is in there, you know? <laughs> we could have, like, Survivor. I wonder if they're past the cage phase. <laughs> We can have a survivor of men who tried have tried to enter the tunnel and just gotten lost. <laughs> like, so, but it turns oh! out my asshole much smaller, like a regular lady sized vagina. I'm thinking because the guys who go up there are like, oh, this is a good fit, you know, and they're just like average joes, you know, that I didn't have to like. I, you know, when you don't pre-screen and you end up with candidates that don't quite fit the criteria. Anyway. <laughs> so, so anyway, so I'm four nine. So <laughs> unless you're a chipmunk, you probably fit the criteria. <laughs> Six inches is behind my belly button. <laughs> if you don't have eight inches, I don't know what you're doing, but I think it's adorable <laughs> that you're trying anything at all. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back to you. So you're sitting there and you're like, well, this is my problem about eating ass. Because I actually, you're right. I've heard everybody's been talking about it. All the comedians are like doing like little bits about eating ass. And my thing is, is that the longer you talk about eating ass, the more in my head it becomes that um, Keenan and Key, Key like Key, Key, Peel and... Y- yeah, I don't know yeah, yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah. yeah, it becomes that skit those guys did about... Um, like, like, uh, the, uh, I want to say caterpillar, but it's not a caterpillar. <laughs> what is it? Where they were like, ass to face, ass to face, they were sewn together. <laughs> ass to face, ass to face, ass to face. 
Yeah. I, that I, whole series <laughs> about how, like, you know, like, it just sounds like a weird, gross, like, poop-eating train to me. The longer you talk about eating ass, the more I'm like, it, it just gets grosser and I mean, but I, I, I appreciate yummy. the fucking bravery and, like, the astute mathematics of it. M- mathematics? Mathematics. And I'm not even particularly good at math. Okay, so but what kind of eating what, ass math are you talking about? It's not just the eating of the ass. It's the ass in general math. This is ass math. Okay. Right? Okay. And okay. the only other math I know is drug dealer math, so, okay. you know, okay. I'm happy about this. This okay. was like a qualifier. Okay. <clears throat> was um, essentially it's running your odds. You really, you get to know understanding chance and what your <laughs> odds of failure and success are. Because if nothing is going to imprint upon you uh-huh. the importance of odds, uh-huh. it it could be like some of the stories I've heard from you know the girls. <laughs> what did the girls say about eating ass? Oh, that well, I mean, yummy. it's it's been everything from like you know, well, my lover and I keep a towel beside the bed because you know shit happens. Oh, to like oh. screeching queens, fucking like coming in my house like a raptor, being like, there was shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that was uh, that stuck with me, you know. Oh, I, I never wanted to be the the shit everywhere yeah, yeah, story yeah, yeah, for yeah, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what's what's worse is like I, I've definitely had a decent amount of anal sex now, and it's all been successful. Yeah. So, in my mind, it's a lot like the traffic safety corridor on Highway 2 where that sign's flashing at you and mm-hmm. it's all like, 28 days since last car incident. And yeah. you're all like, wait a minute. How long do I have then? This is like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be a lot better if it had only been two days, right? Because what are the chances? I know odds, right? The odds are higher the longer it goes without happening. That's true. That's true. So, I figure in my head that anal sex is definitely... A fucking game of odds. And okay. one of these times, your failure rate's coming for you. Well, how could anal sex really ever go wrong, though? I mean... They shit all over my bed! Oh. That type of wrong. Who oh. wants to be that story? Oh, like you stick... Somebody sticks it in and then and then poop explodes? Like that? Yeah, or some... Like, I, I didn't want to investigate. Right? Like, I don't want to know. But, like... I mean... Even... Yeah, you do. Like, there's. I mean, the any the, the towel, yeah. the towel poop. Like, that's a oh, that's a minuscule fail, yeah, right? Like, yeah. you can you don't even have to look at your dick to clean it off. You can, <laughs> right? But the shit all over the bed. Like, how the yeah. fuck are you gonna like yeah. gracefully do that? Yeah. How do you change your sheets and then like you know make yeah. your room smell better? Yeah. And how do you look at the bed and think I have poop sex now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was one of my favorite stories that Joy ever told about how she passive aggressively got back at an abusive boyfriend. I told you that, she that right? She on his bed? No, 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 oh. no. She used to, I was going to say, that's not passive at all. She used to tell him, and this is the weirdest part about the story, is that I think colloquially... Cleveland steamer meant something different to her than it has meant to anyone else in the world because I have searched Cleveland steamer steamer over and over and over again and the kind of sex she was describing was not not it, like I it's maybe it's just an idea that Joy had maybe it's just like she got it into her brain but anyway every time he started to freak her out he started to, like his escalate his violence would escalate he um. She would start getting out all these, these like, uh, furniture catalogs, and she'd start, like, marking all the glass tables, all the glass coffee tables that look sturdy enough for them to have Cleveland steamer sex, which is, I guess, like, somebody poops on top of the glass, and then somebody's lying underneath the glass and jacking off to it, or something. Some kind of sexual act that includes a lot of looking at poo. <laughs> and and was he was she getting paid for this? No, 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 no. She just did it to scare the crap out of this dude so he would stop being a dick to her. Because she was like, we're going to have to start doing this shit now in order to sexually please me or whatever. Right? And, he, you know, she'd be leaving these catalogs around the house with all these, like, glass tables, like, circled. 
And he, you know, at first he was like, fine, fine, I can handle it. I, it's fine, it's fine. It's. And then he was like, wait, who's doing the pooping? And who's not doing the, and who's doing the masturbating? And, like, and then, like, the more she, she would, sh- like, fuck with these catalogs, the more nervous he would get that they were actually going to have to, it was like, it was sex chicken. <laughs> And it seemed to knock him off his game long enough that she wasn't as afraid of him. Anyway, that was, but it, it just seems like you just don't want to bring poop into any situation it doesn't have to be in for me. Sexually, you know, playfully, you know. It's ironic, because I do love a good poop your pants story, but I don't ever really want to actually deal with someone's poop. Super Snarky is brought to you by Snarky Cards. Snarky Cards are real fucking cards for your real fucking life. Laugh now at snarkycards.etsy.com. Here are some best-selling Snarky Cards for your enjoyment. Dear Joy, holy shit, you're knocked up. I hope your baby's head is small and doesn't rip the shit out of your taint. Sincerely, Elisa. Dear Ari, if you were the last unicorn on earth, I'd still fuck a horse. Sincerely, Margo. Dear Seth, stop drinking so I can fuck you later. Sincerely, Janae. Snarky Cards are brutally honest greeting cards. Buy yours today at snarkycards.etsy.com. Hold on, let's review this content for a moment. You know you're super drunk when you thought to name someone Cumberbs. (laughs) Thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. So my sister and I used to torture our little brother's girlfriends. And there was one that we always called Cum Dumpster. <laughs> Never forget it. That girl was so terrified of us. And she really should have been because we were total bitches to her. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> you know my Cum Dumpster story, right? I feel like you've told me before, but I think You remember good... Kelly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. uh-huh Ben's uh-huh, girlfriend. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. She made me the Cunnilingus uh-huh. Saves Live sweatshirt. Yeah. At the same time that she did that, she also made herself a t-shirt. Because uh, she kept overhearing Madison and Ben uh, call her a cum dumpster. Oh, geez. and she what she thought it meant is was that she came a lot. And okay. I'm like, I don't know how you got that out of there. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. They didn't call you a fountain. Yeah. They didn't call you a stream. You know. <laughs> they didn't call you like like you know come shitter like she shits cum, like calm like they didn't they didn't I say, mean yeah, yeah no yeah. it was I was like come they, train they I guess they called you a receptacle yeah and I think and she I, I think par- that they that, let her wear that shirt around them oh jeez for like a little bit which that was the not funny part about that none of it's funny uh they were being dicks to her and she tried to make it nice Right, with, like, absolutely no idea. But you know what? I've fallen for things like that, too, which is why I believe that every woman should download the Urban Dictionary app. For pet Agreed. names especially. Right? Because Agreed. Because there was we a time don't... I got called a strawberry. And in my head, I was like, ooh, strawberry. That sounds cool. juicy. Yeah. And, like, maybe it's about my ass. Yeah. Like, mm. And then I looked it up, Uh-oh. and it actually means a girl that sucks dick for crack. So I was infinitely Whoa. insulted because that I'm a white a person, really... which means I'm an elitist and only put cocaine up my nose. Yeah. Hello? <sighs> that is... I mean... That is such a negative... Yeah. That is such a beautiful word. Right. To describe it's such, such a, a fucking wonderful situation. fruit to, like, have association with that. I was yeah. so upset. Then again, I mean, there's kind of nothing wrong with sucking dick for crack. I mean, there's kind of nothing wrong with sucking dick for whatever the fuck you want, really, as far as I'm concerned. You know, if crack is your deal, then sure. 
but I kind of feel like mm, I still want to unionize these girls with oh, the yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah. Don't no, no, suck no, no, no. dick for drugs. I suck agree. Dick for cash, because you get more drugs with cash than you do for sucking dick. And y- drugs are not the end all be all. At the end of the day, after you have the drugs, you still need to live somewhere. So yeah, I agree with you. We need to help th- these women who are who are strawberries in the world unite and realize that there is power in pussy. We've just been giving it away. Yeah. Yeah, but but yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not opposed to any kind of dick sucking for profit. That's it, that's the one power we actually have, you know? We need to use it. Whore and her wife and yeah, it doesn't matter what it is. It like it, it's still I don't see that there's a whole lot of difference. Yeah, it's security. It's long term versus short term thinking. So okay, so what's well? Your next? I mean, I feel like in our generation, marriage is not so much a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Alrighty, that's fine. I mean, they predict <laughs> the millennials will have like three different careers in their lifetime. Only three? Yeah. I feel like uh, I'm not a millennial, and I've already had three. So that leaves me to question, like, how many relationships were probably or marriages were apt to have. Our parents' generation were three strikes. Like, they okay. were, our, our parents' generation definitely did three marriages. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's about right. Um, I feel like part of the reason why, why millennials get married either older or not at all is because they saw all those marriages, too. And that's something that conservatives, when they talk about, um... Uh, how millennials aren't getting married and how that, you know, leads to the destruction of the family or or is a sign that, that, that things are going wrong in America. But they're discounting that millennials are the ones that had to grow up amongst those broken Yeah, a lot of marriages. people had two families on mm-hmm. holidays, right? Yeah, and so the and goal... And like, not, half-sisters yeah. and half-brothers and multiple extensions of family... Yeah. Uh, and they also saw their parents try and fail at marriage over and over and over again. And they're like, maybe I just don't do that. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, and I see how it could have happened. Like, I was definitely in long-term relationships a bunch as a kid, too. I just didn't marry him. Like, I lived yeah. with them. We were, you know, in There's a something about getting married and but, then un-getting married that seems to really, like... Yeah, it seems like a lot of paperwork, and I fucking hate paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's also, like, people feel like marriage is... <coughs> a I mean, thing that they try at and they either succeed or fail. But the thing is, is that you can succeed for 10 years and then fail at year 11 and it's still a total, you know, a failure. And, like, that's a sucky proposition in general. Right. So there's that. Oh, and I did have one thing that I really wanted to talk about with another person that I, I've been putting off. Like, I don't want to do this podcast by myself. So, um, I, I've been putting off, I've been wanting to, okay. So are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you been hearing about all this post birth abortion shit that everybody's been talking about on the news lately? No. Okay. Cause I've been, you know, like super, you know, I'm obsessed with the news right now. Um, I kind of just have been. As Since soon as Title X uh, was gagged, I, like, I had to take a respite. Okay. Sec. Okay. I get I, it. That could be my death right there. What is Title X? Title X was uh, the act allowing uh, or barring economic discrimination against women for fucking health care. Oh, it's Jesus the thing that's Christ. going to require all Planned Parenthoods to be separated between their abortion services and the rest of their fucking services, including a separate entrance. Jesus Christ. Uh, it's it's the type of enactment that will make Plan B unavailable throughout the country starting very soon. Oh, that's the reason we had to hoard pl- Plan B Absolutely. last year. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Because right. everyone, everyone... And I only know. have one in the cupboard right now, so, like, to keep any out of the oven, I need some Plan Bs in the cupboard. Oh, okay. Is that your shout-out request for Plan Bs? Yeah. Well, I can Anytime tell... Anytime they're free, fucking get them. Okay. All right. Uh, one of my girls is trying to do it for me, too, because I was like, I just... I don't want to die. Yeah. Like, I don't want to die. Yeah. And... Yeah. People want to say that's overreacting, but whatever. They're not the ones that have to wake up from nightmares about a, a, a dystopian future where I am pregnant and there's no medical services and that automatically means I'm just going to die. 
because there's no way I could vaginally deliver a child. Yeah. Because of, like, this, this sincere amount of surgeries and all sorts of shit that I've had. Yeah, that's the thing that I wanted to talk about, about this whole me. issue, is that there are two things that you never hear, and, like, the Republican talking points. Okay, so, first of all, I remember when that rule came down. I remember the week after, on Facebook, every woman I know was posting, she was like, get your plan B. Because the president of Planned Parenthood, I forget her name, but she's a badass, said, I want everyone right now, every woman who is who can, to hoard some plan B so we have some because it will be illegal to give it to you yep. medically in the future yeah. because of this law. Hoard well, it now and some for states your will fight it for as long as they can. Like Washington will end up becoming like a destination abortion state for a while. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we'll see how the next election goes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but but the thing but that, they're setting a precedent for whoever to walk in to decide not to lift any of these horrific things. Like yeah, and it is it's getting they very don't have like to do Handmaid's Tale. We don't have a say over whether or not we have children <laughs> if we get knocked up. Right, so that's that's something, well, that- and I think I've said this like a million times before, and I always make reference to the fact that women historically, like throughout anthropological history, on this fucking earth, made the most strides towards uh, leaving violence and equality as soon as we gained reproductive right. Yeah, like it's a small little blippet in our entire fucking time on this earth. Yeah, like for like, 30 years we were allowed yeah. to not have children if we got knocked up. Right. And all of the advancements that put women in educational situations, that put women in workforces, all of those things started to develop as soon as science got to the point where birth control was available. Yeah. And then it even progressed further than that once access to those medical facilities was made widely available. Yeah. Like, yeah. so a step back from that means that women's yeah. rights are linked to reproductive rights, like on a base level. Yeah, because like if you if you have a child, and it's one of the first only- things that we do to substantiate third world countries. Yeah, when we fucking send like aid over to other countries and shit, one of the first things they fucking do is start instituting condoms and birth control. Yeah, and it gets women to fucking school. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because most women in some of these countries are being raised to be mothers. That's like their whole fucking point as children is Mm -hmm. as soon as they are no longer considered children, they're fucking mothers. Yeah. You know, that's that shit still happens. And I'm afraid that like someday, 50 years from now, all of these fucking bros are just going to be sitting in men's clubs, smoking cigars, being like, oh, Thomas, do you remember that time we let our women talk? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we're going... Like, I see how you're like... It was so funny back then. (laughs) They thought they had a chance. (laughs) I see how... I see how you're like... Okay, we're going straight back there. But I think... I think that we have too many male feminists. And I think that this... All of the shitty legislation we've seen like this is the last bastion of these old guard white guys who need to be in charge of every goddamn thing that isn't about them. Um, and, and them just reaching out, clawing for power. This is their dying gasp. And I believe that as soon as Trump um, dies, uh, retires, uh whatever he's going to do in order to to successfully walk away without him and his kids going to jail as, as soon as he does that uh the AOCs and and the you and me's and the rest of the country that has been angry and hurt over all a lot of these um policies like all of the hardcore racist shit it all just looks to me like like last grasp of power before we go because Nobody's buying it anymore. Even mainstream media can can see through a lot of this. You know? Like, you know, that... I mean, ten years ago, to think that the, the president of Planned Parenthood, or even when I was a kid, the president of Planned Parenthood could make an announcement via Twitter. I mean, obviously, like, no, there was no Twitter in 1995. But okay, like, think about it. Like, she makes an announcement... The and women all over America go out and start stockpiling birth control. Just that of level of organization, cognizance, fighting back, be, having each other's backs, like that alone 
made me feel like, okay, we are in a much better place to fight, to, to come back from this than we have been before. You know? Like, in 1985, I was like, if she did that, there would be a congressional hearing over whether she was allowed to communicate with that many people at once. Or whatever, right? In 1995, they would have been like, is it even legal for her to talk to children? You know? And, and you know, I didn't see anything in the mainstream media about her making that announcement. But I also didn't see anybody coming after her for making that announcement. You know? And I did see women stockpiling. So, like, that we're going to be okay. We're not, we're not straight to a handmaid's tale. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's gonna go like that. I know I'm an I, eternal optimist. I would challenge you then to keep that perspective by leaving our little bubble here. Like we live in such a beautiful place, the West Coast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 no, I and know. And then there I know. is a I know. whole land of fucking stupid between us <laughs> and you. Yeah, I know. I know. There's a whole land of us, like, of, of stupid between us and New York. And I know that... I mean... I, no, 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 no. I, it, I know that I stay in my own little bubble, but I also know that... that I, I don't know that I can go with the Pollyanna. I'm going to hope it, you're fucking right. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to hope. Well, and I... Right? I always Pollyanna. Uh, I know I always Pollyanna. But my vagina is, yeah. is fucking, like, I'm, moving on out. Yeah. No, I'm glad that you're thinking about leaving the U.S. because I also agree with you. This, this is our move towards... Uh, but we've been on so many other levels... Like starting with Flint, the United States has been becoming a third world country for the last fifteen or twenty years. You know, like yep. we we've been moving from first world status the whole time. This is just another indicator to me that that's where we're going. Well, but, I think it's going to look more like Soviet Russia, though, for mm -hmm. us than it's going to look like you know. You know, we've always wanted to be Russia. Russia's always wanted to be us. <laughs> Our relationship with them is very weird, and it's weird to me, like, that Putin and Trump kind of encapsulate that. Like, we think that they're blackmailing each other and having sex. <laughs> like <laughs> Thanks for listening to episode one. I had a great time, and I thought we were funny. We were hella funny! Okay. You might have heard some random casual cannabis consumption and stoner-related rustlings. Because we do like to smoke weed while we talk our shit, and our microphones kind of suck. So a little bit of money would help me and Lids get some better microphones and actually better weed if you're interested in supporting that. So if we cracked you up, give us a tip. Venmo me at Alisa Star, A L I S A S T A R R. The extra R is for extra rock. So, hopefully we'll drop more vaginal science in your ears in episode two. Peace!